No. Hey, this is David Purdue from MyNams.com, and I'm filling in today for uh, Sterling Valentine at the traffic uh, at the Celebrity Traffic Summit. Um, we had Sterling has an issue with his camera, and so I'm jumping in here until he can come on board with us to uh, to to manage this entire uh, traffic summit. And Sterling is excellent at this, so it's big shoes to fill. And um, the first person we had on today is Lynn Terry. I've known Lynn for about six years now. Lynn, I think maybe maybe five and a half. Uh, she came to my first NAMS workshop and she has been like the NAMS queen for many years. In fact, I believe we gave you a crown a few years ago. Lynn, I still you... have it. I actually wear it around the house all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I'm glad to hear that. And John, you're with us too, so you want to um, uh, introduce yourself, John? Yeah, I'm, I'm John Paduchak. I know you guys have seen me before. I'm Sterling's co-host and uh, backstage producer of the show, so great Excellent. to be here with you. So Lynn, you and I were talking a little bit before. Would you like to tell people um, where you're from, what you're doing, and what your expertise is in traffic area? In traffic specifically, sure. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm, my name is Lynn Terry, clicknews.com, and I've been working online for 16 and a half years, and uh, specifically working from home, and um, I'm a super affiliate, and uh, as far as traffic goes, I love traffic, although um, I have a bit of an um, interesting take on it. You know, I'm telling people all over the place, stop trying to get traffic. Just stop. <laughs> uh -huh. I yeah. heard that. Uh, we did an interview a couple of days ago, I think, for my audience, and, and you said, uh, stop trying to get traffic and start finding traffic. Start putting yourself in front of traffic. So what did you mean by that? Go where they are. Go where they are. Yeah, meet them where they are. And that, that can mean a lot of things. I mean, that gets pretty in-depth when you talk about meeting them where they are. But the two big things people are really struggling with is marketing their business online and getting traffic. And those are the two things that I advise people to stop doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about traffic for a second because I just mentioned earlier to you, and you're, you're going to debate me on this, um, <laughs> but I didn't even, I didn't even make my, my theory out yet, so I don't know how you can debate me unless we're just going to debate, period. Well, you, just know my, you know my personality. I do. I love it. So um, I, was, I was saying something about cold traffic versus warm traffic. People get really um, confused about that, and one of the things for me was that I used to think I didn't want any cold traffic at all um, because I really wanted people to introduce us, as an, and as an affiliate, that's really what you were doing for me and for other people when you were um, uh, when you're introducing people into affiliate programs and products. So talk to me about what you think cold traffic and, and warm traffic is. Well, I have a couple of theories, and it's really going to depend on your objective. It's going to mm -hmm. depend on the task at hand. And I get what you're saying now. I understand what you're saying now. But let's take uh, my brand new sales page, for example. Okay, sure. I just released a product. And cold traffic is not going to convert as well as warm traffic. Right. Now, warm traffic can mean one of two things. It can mean they know me personally, or it can mean they were pre-sold by someone who recommended me. And um, so, obviously, my conversion rates are just really, really great for those particular, um, for that warm traffic to the sales page. And so, um, on the flip side, you need to be meeting people who don't know you yet. And there's right. two ways to do that. When they're looking for you or when someone recommends you. When someone recommends you, that's warm traffic. When they're looking for you and they find you, that's cold traffic. And you need to warm it up quick. Yeah, so, and so if they're looking for you, though, and they find you, it's it's a little warmer than if they just stumble on you, right? And that, that to me, to me, that's the ultimate cold traffic. That People goes just stumble back, on you. That goes back to the difference between marketing mm -hmm. and serving your market. Because if you meet them where they are, when they're looking, when they need you or want you the most, that, then that's going to be a warmer introduction. It's, it's the very difference between, um, let's say I get a postcard in the mail from a plumber who offers me 10% off, mm -hmm. and I have nothing broken. Mm -hmm. And me flipping through the yellow pages and calling a plumber, then I'm obviously definitely going to hire them, you know, when I find one I like. So that's it's the same difference there because you can be putting things in front of my face all the time, and unless you're meeting me where I am with the need that I have, it's it's going to get thrown in the trash, or it's going to get it's going to be something I just scan over in my content stream. So uh, targeting is incredibly important, and I think that it is our obligation as business owners, as content marketers, no matter what kind of business you have, it's our obligation to be in front of people when they need them, the, when they need us the most. Mm. 
So if someone is searching for, like if I get onto Google and I search for a local plumber, or if I search, you know, a uh, plumber in Chattanooga, Tennessee, right. I need to find you. That is your obligation as a plumber for me to be able to find you that way, whatever way I choose to search for you. And the same goes for if someone has a question. I have a low-carb blog. I do niche affiliate blogging. And so um, if someone has a question like, um, how do you calculate net carbs? It is my responsibility, my obligation to have that content in front of them when they ask that question. Hmm. And so how do you make sure that you do that? How do you make sure that you're serving your market with the questions that you don't know that they're going to ask? Because I know what they're going to ask. <laughs> how do you do that? That's my, that's my question. Keyword research. Okay. The, and, and you know, the interesting thing is um, a lot of people look at all these things that you learn in internet marketing like keyword research and SEO and blah, blah, blah as technical aspects of internet marketing. But they're not. They're really good tools. So when I'm looking at Word Tracker, which is what I use, freekeywords.wordtracker.com, uh -huh. I look at that and that to me is not just data. That to me is my target market. They actually physically, real people, typed those things into the search engine. Okay? So I look at that list and I say, this is what everyone is asking me. And they're asking me because I serve in this market. So that's how I look at it. It's very personal to me. And I consider it my obligation to answer those questions or uh, enter those conversations is kind of the way that I like to put it. They've started a conversation by typing something into Google. Mm -hmm. It's my responsibility to enter that conversation with a response and then a call to action or the next best click. So it keeps that conversation going. And um, when I view it that way, instead of, you know, getting higher rankings, getting backlinks, you know, marketing my site, getting traffic, when I view it on a more personal level like that, when I talk about serving my market or responding to search queries as responding and answering questions, it makes my business so much more fun. Oh, oh I think we lost David's sound. I think everything froze up for a second. <laughs> no, we definitely lost your sound, David. You want to pop out quick and pop back in? Okay. How about me, John? My screen should be broken. <laughs> <laughs> Your screen seems to be just fine. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Yeah. No, you're perfectly fine. Okay. So, um, I'm not quite sure where we left off there, Lynn. Here we go. David's coming back. Can you hear me now? Now I can hear you. This has been a wild day here, huh? It has so, been a crazy day. So, Lynn, you were talking about the free keywords. Now, now, I wanted to give that link again because that's an excellent tool for the free keyword tool. Oh, Lynn, you pop back in. Lynn froze and she came back. <laughs> yeah. okay. Well, it booted me when you came in the room, so huh. I don't know. There we go. Okay, so you, go. you gave a keyword tool suggestion there, and if you would, give that link again. It's freekeywords.wordtracker.com. Okay. Now, what you were describing almost sounded like conversation starters to me. Is that, what, is that one way to look at that? Because I, when we go back to the cold traffic, these are people typing into Google. They don't know you. They're just looking for an answer, right? Right, but it's it, yeah, it's your job to get in front of them so they can know you. Right, right, yeah. and so from that point, what you're doing is you're starting the conversation and building a relationship at that point, turning them into warm traffic. Yes, it says I've been removed from the video call, so can you hear me? I, you're fine, yeah. Okay. I, what happened is I had to remove old you so that you new can continue. <laughs> Yay, young me is still here. <laughs> so you're perfectly fine. Okay, good stuff. Well, then what was the question again? So the question was, these keywords are like conversation starters, and so you're using that to build from cold traffic to warm traffic by doing all of the things you were talking about earlier, by answering the questions and being there in front of them, right? Yes, absolutely, and they are conversation starters. You know, people are looking for answers. They're looking for solutions. Uh, they're looking for information, but it's no different than, you know, if I'm sitting in Atlanta at your event, for example, and we're all uh -huh. sitting around dinner and someone asks me, um, oh, how come you don't eat pasta or why did you choose that side? And I have a conversation with them and to me it is absolutely no different. Just because it's different technology, people are still asking the questions and I'm still answering them. Cool. So um, what other traffic techniques are you using these days to find cold traffic? Because really that's, that's where we fill our funnel, right? 
Yeah, uh, it is. And search is huge. You can't ignore search. Um, you don't want to use tactics or strategies. You really want to do some evergreen things. Like you just want to have great content. Mm -hmm. You want to have great content optimization. And um, pardon me. And you, social. So search and social to me are the two biggest things. And I'm all about using a very organic marketing strategy. I don't do any paid traffic. I have done paid traffic in the past. I don't have anything against it. I just personally live a, a much more fluid lifestyle than it takes to do paid traffic, which in my personal experience in the past um, was something liking to sitting down to a slot machine in Vegas. I'm, you're just like on it, you right. know? Like, and it's just like you just want to check the stats. You want to, you know, do all the controls, um, you know, split test and yada, yada, yada. And even though after you get it set up and running really nicely, it can uh, run passively for you after that, then there will be policy changes or, you know, there it will be a seasonal thing, you know, where there are fluctuations and it just requires more maintenance than I personally care to do. I'm very mobile. I'm very mobile. So the organic marketing strategy works very well for me because I can manage the whole thing from my back pocket. Right, right. Now I know that I know that you've taken the organic search and you have kind of morphed into the social world as well, um, in, in a big, big way. So would you talk about the social traffic that you're getting? Well, I've been saying for years that social media rank is going to be bigger than page rank ever was, mm -hmm. and we're seeing the results of that now. And so I've been using social as an as a means of it's it's really just integrated. I mean, you really can't do search optimization without social right now. You just can't. Explain how that works. <laughs> um, yeah, well, you know, everyone's on social media, right? Mm -hmm. So the more votes, the more plus ones, the more tweets, retweets, shares, comments, engagement, all of this adds up to what I call your social media rank or your overall profile. Um, and so these things lend to your authority. They lend to the site theming, you know, basically what you're known for or your topic. Um, and al also, in addition to that, which I call social media rank, in addition to that, there are the customized results. So let's say, for example, that I'm searching for a new pair of shoes, and Google's going to tell me, well, 243 of your friends thought these were the best shoes. Oh, cool. And okay. So, you know, so there's a lot of different factors there. Um, it's it's all the little things like claiming Google authorship, you know, and having you know the rich snippets and da 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 da. There's just lots of different things, but it's all very social. So when you show up in the search results, um, and you're attached to your Google Plus account, you've claimed Google authorship, mm -hmm. then it kind of has some social proof attached because mm -hmm. it says, you know, 48 million people love this person, so it kind of makes you want to read what they have to say. Hmm. So you've ex you've you've um You've mentioned a lot of different kind of technical little terms there, like uh, social um, social rank, um, the snippets that you talked about, um, and there's several other things there. I, I assume that you're explaining all that stuff in depth someplace else. I, I would expect it's in your new social media marketing course, marketing results. Yes, uh, we're, we're discussing it. Yeah, we're discussing it all there, and social media is constantly changing, evolving. You know, and it's a cool thing. So I have a private um, Facebook group set up for people who are in the course, and we are just having this ongoing discussion all the time mm -hmm. about whether to use automation with social media, about <laughs> whether um, you know whether or not to do that, whether or not to do this, all the little ins and outs and stuff. So obviously, any term that you hear me say here that you don't understand, you can tweet me at Lynn Terry and ask me, or you uh -huh. can Google it. That's easy too. So, um, but yeah, it's. Yeah, we're, that's where we're discussing it. It's actually a lot of fun because it's interesting how everyone does social media differently. I was on a uh, forum, I guess it was last week, and there was this um, there was this thread called "What is the best social platform?" Mm -hmm. which was interesting to me because there is no best social platform. Each one has its own benefits. So, for example, brands and merchants they're on Twitter, and you know this because the mainstream media is promoting the heck out of it. So you can't watch a sporting event or a TV show without seeing a hashtag. Right. Um, and so, it, you know, if you want to connect with, you know, a specific brand of shoes or a specific brand of food or a specific restaurant, you're going to reach them on Twitter. You're rarely ever going to reach them on Facebook. Right. And so it's there's no favorite about it, and it doesn't really matter if you don't like Google Plus. You still need to have a profile there. You still need to allow people to plus one your content, make sure that's readily readily available, and you still need to claim Google authorship through Google Plus. So preferences are out the window. You need to make sure that you're tied in and that you're using each platform appropriately for the things that it's best for, the ways okay. that work best in your business. 
And, and so back to my question, my original question about cold versus warm traffic. Are you seeing that social is the best way to warm people up then and get them into your funnels? Because I assume that's what you want to do, is get them into your funnel on your site, right? Yeah, here's the thing. When people are on social media, they're already warmed up. They're in mm -hmm. social mode. So it's different than if I'm searching Google or mm -hmm. if I'm reading my email. Because when I'm searching Google or when I'm reading my email, I'm in critical mode. You know, I'm I'm um, skeptical of everything. Okay. So, but when I'm on social media, it's a social platform. And if you're not marketing, if you are, you know, socially engaging with your market, then people are already warmed up to you. People are interested in meeting new people, liking new pages, getting involved in new conversations, et cetera, et cetera. So you, it kind of works to your benefit in regards to cold versus warm. Okay, cool. So, um, do you think what? What do you? Th let me. I, I always like the way you have your pulse on what's going to happen next. And mm -hmm. tell me about what is going to happen next with uh, because everybody's been saying for a long time email is going to be dead, right? We don't see that yet, mm -hmm. um, but we do see that social is becoming a bigger and bigger place to market. But is it a place where you really want to market hard, or is it a place where you want to engage more? You know, it's interesting you ask that because some of the bigger um, some of the bigger retailers tried social commerce uh -huh. and pulled out. You know, and this has been over the last year or two. You know, and they basically tried to like overlay traditional catalogs with social media. Right. So, and that's called F commerce instead uh -huh. of just social commerce when it's specifically on Facebook. And they pulled out because they weren't getting the results they wanted. But that's trying to tie in old media with new media. And so you really have to figure out what the market wants and deliver it in the way that they want. So um, I, I totally lost your question. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we headed? Where are we headed? Email Where are marketing we headed? or social marketing or what's the best way to engage and keep that traffic coming to your site? Well, you had originally, you know, talked about, you know, people had had predicted email would be dead. Right. But the interesting thing I'm finding is that social media actually increases your open rate and your click through rate with email. Oh, talk about so, that. That's yeah, interesting. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, the, we all get a ton of email. Yes. Right. Okay. So of all the emails you get, uh, for me personally, especially, it's the people that I see crossing my screen all the uh -huh. time that I open their emails more. So that engagement factor bleeds over into the inbox, and um, so you know the fact that I have some sort of relationship, regardless of how it is, even if it's one-sided, even if I'm just kind of lurking or tuning in. If you're crossing my screen multiple times a day, and I like what you have to say, I'm more I'm more likely to open your emails. So I'm doing a lot of back and forth with that. You know, uh, you want to make sure that you invite people who subscribe to your list, or especially people who purchase your products to join you immediately on social media. Let's stay connected. Um, and you also kind of on the flip side, you know, if you already have an established list, I'm inviting them to participate in Facebook conversations, you know, different things like that. So mm -hmm. it's real important to integrate the two right now. Um, and there's also lots of different options where you can, um, hi Joel, there's lots of different <laughs> options too where you can, uh, you know, add buttons, especially if you use a, a Weber platform, which I recommend and use. Mm -hmm. But there, you can add buttons into your emails where people can share them or like them or tweet them. And you can even set it to where which link specifically you want to share. Maybe not the archive of that actual email, but the thing that you're talking about in the email. So you can actually make your emails more social as well. So um, you said something about open rates. Have you tested the open rates um, and how they've improved through your social marketing? Yeah. I don't have my stats open at the moment, but I am seeing some improvement, which is a okay. good thing. And for me personally, you know, I'll tell you, I was kind of out of the loop for a while. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, not everybody knows, I had surgery earlier this year, and I was out of the loop for a good, you know, five, six, seven months that I didn't actively work. And so for me, that was a big part of warming back up my relationship with my list. Mm -hmm. You know, I um, started, you know, hosting some free Q&A webinars, um, doing some giveaways, um, and of course, really integrated social back into it so that we could get back on a more personable level. Okay, so um, that's a really interesting idea right there, that you could actually step away and come back and re-engage everybody pretty quickly and pretty easily. Is that, am I stating that correctly? It depends on who you are. I mean, I'm Lynn Terry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. I'm being... For people who don't know me, I'm being funny. <laughs> I'm being funny. 
But I know Kelly's laughing. There's a yeah. private joke in there somewhere. But <laughs> it really depends on the relationship you had with them in the first place. It depends right. on the quality of content that you're delivering. It depends on the length of the relationship. You know, I've, I've had some people who've been on my list for more than 10 years. Sure. And so for me to step out for six months but let them know why, you know, you know, it's it's all good. But you can't just, you know. Um, build a, a brand new list, leave it totally cold, and come back six months later and try to sell them a ClickBank product. Right. So I've he I've heard you uh, actually say at our event one time that you live your life out loud, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is an interesting yeah. thing. It's an interesting concept. Explain what that is to people. It gets me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get more specific with that? Well, thing? well, um, people are concerned about exposing too much of their life on social media. Sometimes, um, ah, yeah. and you know, there there is a line that you don't want to cross, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's stuff that you want to keep private, but also to engage in the way that you engage with people is really effective. I mean, you have uh, rabid fans on social media, and you know th that that is because you engage really well and you're open. So I like um, I like to say it like this: I, I have some really great friends yes, on social do. media and a really cool peer network. Which and and rabbit fans is nice. That's good. But I've actually formed relationships with these people, so that when I come to an event like yours in Atlanta or right. any other event, I know who they are. I know about their children. I know what they've been through this year. I know that whether they're coffee drinkers or not. Right. There's so many things that we already know about each other, um, which is great. As far as living out loud, I'm cautious about that. There are some things that I don't share. I'm very conservative about my personal life, having been you know a, a single woman for. I don't know, almost 14 years. So I tend to be fairly conservative about that, but I think you should pick and choose. And mm -hmm. I was actually talking about this. I did kind of a private um, bonus training session with my group earlier this week and had an objectives worksheet. Yep. You're familiar with that worksheet. I and am. one of the things that I talked about was you want to know how you want to be known and what you want to be known for. And then your reputation, your persona, your personality, how people perceive you, people's perception of you is, is reality, period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so m my big point there was make it intentional. Know how you want to be known, know what you want to be known for, and intentionally you know, be that person. You have to be true to your authentic self, your real self, or it will never work. It won't come off right. But the point is, is you do get to pick and choose which aspects of your life. Like you'll notice, um, Carrie Wilkerson, Barefoot uh -huh. Executive, doesn't mention the names of her children. You know, like she has baby barefoot that she'll call them or whatever, and that's a personal choice. And I, you know, I totally respect that. I think it's great. Right. So and when you I, crack the code, you know who she's talking about, right? Pardon? When you crack the code, you know who she's talking about. So that's <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> as you get into it. Right, right. So but you, you mentioned the. For, for I'm sorry. The go ahead. I'm just saying it's good for the public thing because there are weirdos out there, you okay. know. Um, and so, little things like I don't check in somewhere until I've left, and that depends on where I am and who I'm with, you know. Um, but as I'm leaving, I might check in somewhere, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, but there's lots of stuff, you know. I had someone show up at my back door years ago, mm. in at night, <laughs> and um, I moved. Wow. Yeah, it was a big deal to me. Wow. So, yeah, um, I, I I used to consult, and uh, so I would drive home from Atlanta, a three and a half hour drive, and unfortunately, I taught my wife how to use a shotgun, um, and so I had to be very careful about when I knocked on our, my own door coming home <laughs> at night. <laughs> I had to call ahead. <laughs> there you go. But that, yeah, yeah that, that particular incident was because originally a Weber required you to use the physical address and did not allow P.O. boxes. And, yeah. for, and once it's out there on the web, it's out there for good. Yeah. I don't care if it's a private message or an email you send to someone or th something you think is private. It's the same with text messages. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, my, my point is once it was out there, it was out there. There was no alternative. I had to move. Mm -hmm. So tell me, um, first off, before we get away from you, we've got, a, we've got five minutes left here um, with, with this one. We'll incorporate some other folks who are on. Um, but would you talk about the, the, um, that new course that you've uh, released? It's SMR, uh, Social mm -hmm. Media Results. And would you tell people what's involved in that? And if you've got a link that you'd like to, to tell people about how to find out about that, that'd be great. I love the objectives worksheet. I love that you did that with my community. I really appreciate you going through that. It was very valuable. So, yeah, that's, that actually came out of my personal business journal. 
Mm -hmm. um, and that objectives worksheet were that those were questions that I you know asked myself in my own journal. I thought they were important for every business owner to really analyze uh, for themselves. It's called social marketing results. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not actively promoting the product, <laughs> so you can do a search. You'll find out all about it. People are talking about it everywhere. Feel free to tweet me at Lynn Terry, but it's called Social Marketing Results, and it's really a very fun but aggressive organic marketing strategy. It's all about getting free traffic. It's all about leveraging social media. Mm -hmm. It's not just about making sales and traffic. It's about making uh, very profitable, beneficial contacts building on relationships that can actually boost your business. In that, um, in that course I talk you know, very specifically with live examples from my niche site. So this is outside of internet marketing. Most of the examples are taken from my low carb blog. Mm -hmm. And I talk about being brand new in that market and getting the attention of a major brand, in fact top of the food chain in that market, and also a major market leader and how they promoted something for me and how that happened, why that happened. And I explain step by step you know, how to duplicate those results in any niche with any business model. Um, so the results have been amazing. I, I think that's probably my favorite part is because I have a private Facebook group set up for people in social marketing results. And um, they're coming in and they're talking about the results they achieved, how fast they achieved them. One of my big things too is working in time blocks. So I'm talking about achieving these types of results in 15 to 30 minutes a day max. Mm -hmm. And I'm real strict about that. You know, don't get sucked in for hours. Mm -hmm. And so when you get very specific about your objectives, like we went over in that uh, bonus objective, uh, objectives worksheet, um, it makes it super easy to get into that time block. And like that time, time block, and like I always say, know what you want to get done. Get in, do it, and get out. You know, when you when you mentioned that on our call the other day uh, about being very specific about what you wanted, um, I I thought about my wife and I going to the grocery. She hates it when I go to the grocery with her, because she goes in with a list and I go in to browse. You know, because <laughs> I fill up the cart. <laughs> now you see, I don't. I go to Walgreens, and I'll tell you why. Because it's small. Uh -huh. I don't care if I pay ten times more. I go into Walgreens because it's small and they're actually nice to me. Yeah. And I know exactly what I want. And um, someone has joked to me before that I'm on one of those shopping sprees because mm -hmm. I'm like boom, 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 out. Right. <laughs> I'm the same <laughs> with my business objectives. I like to microtask, and I say know what you need to get done that day because working from home, we all know distractions happen, things come up. You know. Um, for example, if you have kids in school, it might be 9 o'clock in the morning when one calls me, I have to go pick them up. So yeah. my objective is top three priorities done first thing every day. And then if by 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning something comes up or a friend calls and wants to go to lunch, I, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, if people want to hear um, a um, hour-long webinar, hour-plus webinar with you, then come to mynams.com and take a look at it there. We have it on our uh, homepage there, so right. uh, it'll right. be up there ne till next week. If and, and that's a great place to understand a little bit more in depth exactly what you're talking about here and how important the social media results, social marketing results uh, program is, as well as that objectives worksheet. That is a really cool thing that you walk through. Yeah, you know, I highly recommend that people listen into that replay. Um, because I did it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I I really I think it's good information, mm -hmm. and you have to know my personality. I'm just humor. Anyway, it is really good information. I think because I specifically talked about business objectives and the aspects of them that you may not have considered before, with six or seven very simple questions that seem super easy to start, but once you really start digging into trying to answer them for yourself, you find it a little bit difficult. So we went over that in great detail, and it can make a dramatic difference in your business through your mm -hmm. targeting and through the type of people you attract into your mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. Okay, well thank you. I really appreciate that. Now we have one of your friends and my friends here at the bottom, two of your friends and my friends here at the bottom. We have uh, Kelly McCausey and Joel Com. Kelly, do you know Joel? And Joel, do you know Kelly? Oh yeah. <laughs> Kelly, what did that say? I'm a big deal at lynnterry.com. <laughs> Like I'm a, at Lynn Terry. I'm a big deal like Lynn Terry. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, that's, you are. And, and that's funny. How are you doing, Kelly? I'm good. I'm good. Hi, Joel. Hey, how's it going, gang? Uh, Sterling, you know, you're, you're salt and peppering beautifully. I know. Have I more for what? <laughs> you know, I'm not sure for the better, but it is what it is. I mean, uh, poor Sterling had a, uh, um, a camera issue, and we decided that since uh, we had people come to this hangout anyway, we should do it. So I just stepped in and said, I'm going to be Sterling for a while. Well, um, we love you, so well, glad, thank you. glad that you're here. And I noticed you're an astronaut today, Joel. Um, how did that happen? 
Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, depending on the day, I'm an astronaut. I'm a rocket scientist. I, I can be a brain surgeon. Um, I can be anything I want to be in this marvelous world of internets at, where you never know who people really are behind the profiles. James Bond. They James Bond. All right. All right. So I've got a I've got a uh, question for you guys about format today. Since I have all three of you here, plus John and Sterling is away, we can pretty much do this however we want, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of wondering. Jack. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So I'm just kind of thinking. Let's talk traffic with all three of you, and um, and what the best ways of, of driving traffic that you like. Um, and and if you don't mind, let's start with Kelly. Kelly, can you just kind of talk about um, your favorite ways of driving traffic? Uh, sure. Well, my all-time favorite is podcasting. Uh, I have been podcasting for a really long time. Next month, it'll be 10 years in internet radio. Uh, and then 10 months after that, it'll be 10 years in podcasting. But Which is like 100 years in dog years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. My uh, podcasting has been a fantastic source of traffic for me. Uh, iTunes is a search engine, and people use it. And you know, I get clients directly from iTunes. Mm -hmm. Last year, I got a coaching client that signed up for my biggest package. And when I chatted with her, she said she found me in iTunes, listened to a couple episodes, and and signed up to coach. Mm -hmm. It was that direct. Of, of a connection from from the podcast to to the client mm -hmm. yeah. well you know and I, I did a bad thing here I just jumped right in instead of asking you to introduce yourself because I oh. know all of you guys so if you would tell people who you are where you are and how to uh, get in touch with you sure uh, I'm Kelly McCauzy my website is solosmarts.com mm -hmm. uh, solo meaning solopreneur I teach online marketing to solopreneurs with a focus on blogging podcasting content marketing and uh, the offer funnel okay cool cool so Joel what's your favorite traffic method uh, well, you know, I won't say favorite. I'll talk about what I'm experimenting with right now. I'm okay. putting up. Uh, I'm I'm playing with uh, some new blogs based on a couple things that interests that I had run across uh, using Socrates theme. Threw them up in a few minutes, and I'm using the social shares to see if I just do this. If I just post stuff and use uh, my social. Um, profiles, how much traffic can I drive to it? And, and it's a lot of fun. It's really interesting to see based on what you post and how you post on Facebook and, and Twitter um, how much traffic comes to those sites. Uh, and uh, eventually I'll probably do some blogging about them and some linking and try to send some other traffic. But uh, there's a, a lot of people can respond to social if you post a compelling picture um, and a headline. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I did the same thing with you. I jumped right in. If you would tell people who you are, where you are, and how you became an astronaut science scientist, uh, and how they can get in touch with you. Uh, well, I'm Joel Com. I'm right here, and here <laughs> it is in Denver, where I woke up to our first snow. No kidding. Uh, yeah, not a lot, but if you go to my Facebook page, Joel Com, you'll see a picture that I posted. I woke up and I looked outside and my. Uh, I mean, we always get our first snow some by the end of October. It's the beginning of October, um, and looking at the weather forecast, it's going to be 70 tomorrow. So that's one of the things I love about living in in uh, Colorado. Is wow, winters can be like that. So we just don't have much spring or fall here, and that that bums me out. It's either winter or summer. Um, what else? Where can people find me? I'm everywhere. Mm -hmm. I am. Uh, I, I own the rights to dot .com, so mm -hmm. I own the internet, and uh, so anywhere you go, there I am. You own the rights to dot .com, which is dot .com being dot .com, right? Uh, yeah, we actually, it was kind of funny, I don't know, uh, Lynn might remember years ago I did a magazine called Top One Report. Uh, it was a physical publication, and for an April edition one year, we did a, a fake cover, April Fool's, talking about how I won a legal battle um, to own the rights to .com, since my last name is Com. So right. there's actually a few people that wrote me and said, congratulations. Like, 
<laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be nice to have that? Which reminds me of another great April Fool's joke. Uh, of course, most of you are probably familiar with the uh, the iFart application that we created that uh, that exploded onto the app scene many years ago. And uh, we did an April Fool's joke. Uh, here's, of course, the app. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want a demonstration, don't you? Of course you do. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Joel. <laughs> yeah. So we did, a, <laughs> we did an April Fool's joke um, in 2009 um, that uh, we were incorporating Apple's new iSent technology into iFart so that when you would make the fart sound, you would actually be able to smell it. And there was actually some people that wrote us that said it's not working. <laughs> Oh, that's terrible. That uh, really is. That really is. Now, how, how, well, of course, they wrote into you, so you're driving traffic with your April Fool's jokes, right? So, oh, it was hilarious. It's not yeah. working well, you yeah. know. If you so, want it to work, you actually have to eat beans, and when you press the button, it's a do-it-yourself. and then. All you, right. This uh, is really going downhill, and I'm losing control. Okay. So... <laughs> Sorry. That was a great marketing strategy, mm -hmm. very warm strategy. And by the way, let's talk about um, a very warm strategy. Oh, that's terrible, Lynn. Um, uh, <laughs> that, that, that really stinks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, Are you sure you want me to speak at NAMS, David? I, I'm having second <laughs> thoughts, Joel. I really am having second thoughts about it right now. But all of these people that are here right now will be at NAMS, by the way, February the uh, 7th, 8th, and 9th this year. So, um, Kelly, I'm coming back to you. <laughs> and Joe, we'll get back to you in a minute. <laughs> so, Kelly, you were talking about the iTunes. How do you incorporate iTunes and on all the traffic that you're doing with iTunes into the rest of the world that you're involved in? I know you're doing so many other things. Talk about how iTunes and podcasting really uh, integrates with the rest of your marketing strategies? Well, I mentioned iTunes as a search engine. So, um, you know, people, people when they find your podcast, they can listen to it in iTunes and, and they never have to come back to your website. They could enjoy your podcast mm -hmm. and, and never have shown up at home. So I make sure during my episodes to make several references to the show notes, mm -hmm. drawing them back to the website, uh, you know, telling them that there's links and resources to be found there. I have the, the intro of my podcast, uh, the, the voiceover artist I hired, make sure to mention that there are more great resources on the web at solosmarts.com mm -hmm. to, to get them over there. Okay. Um, you know, to make that connection. Now, I know one of the products that you sell is a uh, Know Your Stats product. So can you tell us a little bit about your stats from, from iTunes? Is it your biggest traffic source to your site, or is, are there others? It is not my biggest traffic source, no. Um, I haven't done a, a percentage measure in quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, but no, search engines, Google is still my top of course. Uh, source of traffic. And, and after that, it's Facebook. So, so iTunes comes in somewhere after the two big dogs. Which is exactly what Lynn was saying earlier about Facebook being integrated with a, a search type um, approach to traffic these days. Um, you know, I asked Lynn earlier about um, what she saw in the future, basically, uh, from the social perspective. What do you see? I mean, it seems like everybody can be a um, an iTunes podcaster or have your own radio show, or now with Google uh, Hangouts, you can almost have your own television show. Um, do you see that being a big uh, shift, or is it a, just another traffic method for people? Well, do you know what, I, what makes me really exciting about podcasting, excited about podcasting today? is uh, Kindle books. Oh, and, really? And let me tell you why. Um, people who have iPads, mm -hmm. an iPad mini, they are using uh, iTunes to seek out written content as well. Um, it, the channelization 
of the world is here and everything is getting mixed together so in a few years it's going to be TV slash radio slash internet all squished together. It's going to, uh -huh. it, there's, the lines are so blurred. Folks are going to iTunes to search for TV shows to watch, for movies to watch, for books to read. And when they search for those topics of interest, iTunes serves them up all of the different media formats. Mm hmm so someone might have went to iTunes to look for an internet marketing book and they're very likely to find me mm -hmm. as a podcaster because iTunes serves it up. Here's the books, here's the podcasts, here's you know all the different media formats. So the more iPads and, and iPad minis and tablets that are out there, the more people using iTunes, the more people are finding me and it's because of that blending so uh, so many people have tried to say that podcasting is blase you know that it had its day nah -uh, that's absolutely <laughs> bonkers <laughs> nah -uh. that's, <clears throat> that's completely insane when iTunes came out when podcasting erupted my listenership went from me having to train my listeners day by day mm -hmm. to boom a bunch of people who had something to listen with mm -hmm. and every and and every Mother's Day and every Christmas and every birthday when more of these get out there into the world my listenership continues to grow you know until there's a tablet in every hand until there's a smartphone in every hand uh, you can't say that this isn't growing mm -hmm. So, so you're talking about iTunes a lot, but one of my favorite places to go for my content, and I'm going to ask you guys as well what your favorite place is to get content, because this this directly I think affects traffic to our sites. One of my favorites is is uh, Amazon, because I'm using Amazon now to watch movies, to watch um, uh, to watch series, to um, if I, if in fact I don't even watch TV anymore, which this could be bad for TV, because I wait for the series season to complete so I can watch the whole thing if I'm interested in it, right? And that way I don't have to just be strung along every week. Um, but you get the podcasting, you get the series, you get the books, you get all the stuff like you were saying, and I kind of think Amazon is the sleeping giant out there. Um, oh, interesting. You know, the summer series Under the Dome, the big yeah. sci-fi yeah. Stephen King hit, um, huge. In fact, they decided to extend it. Was, um, wasn't that not exclusively... Didn't they have an exclusive deal with Amazon? They did, and I got a notice every week on that one from Amazon right. that it was released prior to the the um, broadcast. So yeah, it's actually they're they're working very hard to get those things together. I think. Well, it's interesting. You know, the same thing that Kelly's seeing, I'm seeing, and we're all seeing in Google. Mm -hmm. So no matter what you're searching for, um, you know, Google's going to deliver up different types of results. You know, they're going to deliver up images, videos, blog posts, news. Um, shopping, you know, just based on your intent, what the intent of your search is. And um, so I agree, and I see that same thing blending. In fact, um, you know, you see televisions now that are integrated mm -hmm. with social and YouTube automatically. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's that's kind of been coming for a while now. But the thing is, is everyone is so, you know, getting so distracted. It's kind of like shattered glass. Right. You know, it's all cool at first, but now we have too many options, we have too many things going on, and we're getting overfed and overwhelmed. We have all these various content streams. So one of the things I see happening, um, and, and we're kind of starting to see, you know, some programs that are that are trying to make that happen. But I see integration, mm -hmm. where we basically have one funnel where everything is coming through at this one place. And so we're starting to see some programs now, like where you can kind of streamline and get all of your content together. Um, but I see that as, as kind of being kind of the, the next gen thing. Interesting. What you what you just asked me made me really curious. So I googled it. There, I wonder if Amazon will eventually have a podcast directory. They do not yet have a way to submit a podcast feed to them. Mm -hmm. I bet it's coming. They um, need one. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But in the meantime, I take my best interviews and and turn them into a transcript and make them into a, a book for the Kindle as a way of reaching that channel with my content. Now Daniel Hall was telling us at the last NAMS about uh, taking 
audio webinars, those kind of things, audio content, podcasts, whatever you have, and turning those into sellable MP3s on Amazon. And I do buy MP3s on Amazon as well. Um, but it's not a podcast download directly directory like you're talking about from iTunes. Right. Joel, are you in the in the iTunes and, and uh, um, uh, the podcasting world? Oh yeah, I started uh, restarted the Joel Com show a couple months ago, and I was actually just pulling it up. I've been really fortunate. Um, we've got eight episodes out now, and uh, if you just look up my name, you'll you'll see it. Um, and I'm using Libsyn.com to uh, to distribute it to iTunes and Stitcher and, and some others. Say that uh, again. Uh, what's that link? Libsyn. L i b s y n. Yep, L, L Y B S Y N. Uh, it's a lot of the the big podcasts use it. It's basically it's it's podcast hosting, mm -hmm. and then you manage it yourself, and then you get your feed and distribute it. So I am if you go to my sh um, my site joelcom.com and click the podcast or Joel Com Show link, you'll see all my podcasts, which you could embed them using their wizard, and then you could also go to iTunes and Stitcher and other places where it's syndicated and download it. And um, I've been really fortunate because when you go to uh, business management marketing, they've been featuring me in the new noteworthy section for seven Ooh. weeks now. Nice. Yeah, uh, but it doesn't get you as much traffic as you think it would. Most people, they're looking very specifically for uh, a podcast, and they search for that. Being uh, featured is nice. It's a you know little trophy you can put on the shelf, but it I don't think it actually gets me that much more traffic. Did you notice an increase in downloads, though? Well, like I say, it's been up there for almost the duration of the show. Oh, okay. So I can't really tell, um, you know, what it's doing or not. I, I've got um, how many reviews so far? Twenty-five reviews. Um, five stars, which makes me happy. It's probably be because of my clean lyrics rating. Uh, <laughs> and, and it's interesting how much headlines play a role in driving people. Every, uh, you know, I have a, I came up with my format, and every show is how to do or how I did something. Um, that's the name of it. How not to do social media. How I lost 55 pounds. How to become a recognized expert in your field. Which, interestingly enough, has been the most um, downloaded episode. Uh, it, the you how never, I lost 55 pounds. Has, no, has that's second. The first okay. one is how to become a recognized expert in your field. Huh, that was uh, that was number one. Interesting. But okay. yeah, I would encourage everybody to give a listen. It's um, uh, I decided for this show to fly solo. In the past, I've done the interview format, and I've done live streams and video interviewing people. But uh, for the first time, I'm just sitting behind the microphone and uh, spouting off my mouth and seeing what comes out and if people like it. Okay. So let's get back to traffic and tell me, um, we've talked, a, we're kind of all over the place with all these different techniques. Um, what's the benefit? I mean... Of, of driving traffic and we talked before you guys got on with Lynn about cold versus warm traffic. Um, how's the world changing with cold versus warm? One of the things that, I'm, and before you answer that question, one of the things you guys have pointed out is that um, there's so much competition for the screen these days and that's kind of what I tell people is that you got to be on the screen just about all the time because you know if you scroll off the first screen you're gone. So tell me what you're thinking about cold versus warm traffic and how to get people more engaged, more involved. Let's start with Kelly. Well, I, I love my iTunes traffic because they've listened to the podcast. They've heard me. They get a feel for who I am and, and my culture. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I'm not stuffy. I hate the P word professional mm. <laughs> um, you know I I like I'm laid back I I created a business to to work around my life and and I want to teach others to do the same um, so if they've been able to hear from me before they get onto my list then they're ready for me and they're real receptive to my offers <clears throat> if they come to me cold um, you know if you just if you start on my list and you haven't heard my voice, you're definitely cooler and and you're it's going to take you longer to get to know me. I just mm -hmm. want to be in your ears. 
that's where I do good. Um, you know, well, that's where you could make a decision pretty quick. You're either going to like me or you're going to hate me. Mm -hmm. And I'm comfortable with that either way, you know. Okay. And, and it happens faster by voice. Okay. Make friends John? and enemies. <laughs> What was the question? The question is cold versus warm. How do you get people? Um, what's your favorite technique for for getting people from the cold versus warm? And do you see the value of social versus, um, let's say, legacy marketing in that way? Yes. The answer is yes. I love cold <laughs> and warm traffic, and you know I don't over strategize and overthink um, traffic. I tr it's very organic for me. If I get bogged down in, uh, in the technical aspects of it and trying to analyze where they're coming from, I lose sight. I don't have as much fun, and I just want to have fun doing what I'm doing. And so I create content. I use relevant headlines and keywords, and I put it out there using the means I have, whether it's on my blog where I've got a lot of warm traffic already coming because they know, like, and trust me, mm -hmm. or, uh, I, I, or they're on my list. I send them an email. I post it on social, whether there's a referral or podcast. It, it, we love everybody. All are welcome. All, all stripes, whether you've known me for 18 years online or whether you just encountered me, I'm going to be the same guy, and uh, you either like it or you don't. And if you do, then come on in. Water's fine. Leave some comments. Let's interact and dialogue. And if you don't, uh, well, thanks. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Find somebody that, that meets uh, your particular taste more. So you, you all three of you have been online for a long time. And uh, so you've gone through many different phases of uh, traffic generation and filling that funnel. Um, and, you know, Lynn, we talked earlier about, uh, about how to get people into the funnel today. And you're doing that mostly with who you say people are already warm on social media. Um, how important is the funnel today? Talk about that. How important is driving traffic to the funnel? Well, you know, Kelly would be better to talk about the funnel. We actually just talked about that on her podcast, and we mm -hmm. were talking about how we have completely different strategies um, on that. So um, that was at solosmarts.com, correct, Kelly? The podcast we did? Yep. And, um, yeah, we just talked about that. But um, it, for me, you know what, I, the interesting thing is this whole conversation has come around full circle because I was talking about meet people where they are. Stop getting out there. Stop trying to get traffic and go to where the people are. And besides, it's not traffic. It's people. Real people who buy real products who have real opinions. So just if you cut that out of your business, it makes your business so much easier. So meeting people where they are. And you know, Kelly talked about um, meeting them in iTunes, um, meeting them because they've just gotten a new Kindle as a gift and they're looking for things of interest. And you have to know these things. You have to kind of get in the shoes of your market and know who they are, where they are, what's going on in their lives. So if you're reaching out to, you know, predominantly, um, you know, women, then you definitely want to be on Kindle and Pinterest. Okay. Plain and simple. You know, so um, so just going back to that, and, and I don't have no idea what your question was. <laughs> Happens, doesn't it? So uh, the question was really about driving people. The best way that you like to drive people to the funnel. Uh, well, it really depends. You know, I'm an affiliate marketer. Sure. So a lot of times I'm driving tra traffic to other people's funnels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the easiest way to do that is to talk about things. You know, so for example, um, let's say that you know I have a really good offer for chilies, and it's a CPA offer, just as an example. Mm -hmm. And I I'm in the food niche. Okay, mm -hmm. so. Um, I go to Chili's, I check in at Chili's, um, I show pictures of my lunch, I talked about how great it was and how much I saved, you know, I mean, that kind of thing. So it's all about social proof as far as me getting people into a merchant's funnel. Um, but, you know, it, really it's all about the relationships. I'll tell you, if you have an engaged audience, if, if you have a, a readership, your total reach, by the way, is going to be the best asset you have in your business. And that's not just going to include your ideal website visitors or your ideal customers. Your total reach is going to include your peer network mm -hmm. and your friends as well. Like we mm -hmm. all know each other, you know, through some association. That's part of, you know, your total reach. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> I totally forgot where I was going with that. 
<laughs> I love when that happens. Brain fart. It's totally awesome. <laughs> you know what, you know what that is? That's that. not a sign of, of old age or anything like that. It's a sign of a brilliant mind that is just focused on so many things that That's you right. just have a hard time keeping <laughs> up with yourself. That's right. I remember, I remember now where we were about getting people to the funnel. Stop trying to drag people from where they are and put them somewhere else. Period. So. Okay. In my opinion, you need to meet them where they are. So okay. you, you don't want to spend all your time trying to get everyone off Facebook when you can, you know, conduct business right on Facebook. Perfectly fine. Okay. And so it just really depends on your model and your market. You know, having been an affiliate marketer for so long, I just now flipped the coin and I'm and I'm on the merchant side, which has been a real fun and interesting experience, social media wise as well. But I will just say that, um, as you know, from an affiliate perspective, my big thing is talking about stuff, real stuff, real products with real people, real mm -hmm. consumers, and having those conversations. So, you know, the, it's it's all about kind of building up those relationships and having real conversations. You can't just be on there saying, you know, sign up for my list or download my report or or what have you. You have to meet them where they are at that exact moment in time. So, if you need to lead them in that direction, then you start a discussion on that topic. Mm -hmm. There you go. First, first. There you go. And okay. there would be the difference between cold traffic and warm traffic even on your warm social media platform. You can't just throw a topic out there. It's, you know, it's um that's just random because nobody responds to it. In fact, I've put things out on Facebook or on various places before and it's just crickets. You know, just in testing. And it's very interesting that you really kind of have to lead up to or warm it up to that uh, th that discussion or that point of conversion. So one of the things that I, um, and I'll just use this as an example, is Dennis Becker had started um, maybe six months ago a, um, uh, what do you call it, a group on uh, Facebook, and it was the I Am Insiders track, and it has exploded. And the reason it's mm -hmm. exploded is because he does a daily topic. Mm -hmm. And every day he starts a conversation about a topic, and I love the way he's doing it. And people get on there, and it, and the the result of this was he he was afraid that he was going to take away from his paid membership site. The result was that it exploded his paid membership site because people wanted more of what they were getting there, uh, which is you know that's what we all want is is to have that interaction going on. So Joel, talk to me about um, about. Um, getting people into the funnel these days and what you do to get people into the funnel. Uh, you know, it, it still comes back to providing value first and foremost. And and I like to give away stuff. I mean, I've done, I was just counting the other day how many ebooks and reports I've done since 2005, and there's like 50. Mm. I, I just, I couldn't even believe how many that there were. And I, I'd like to give away content and the best way to get people to give you their email and name which is of value to them even though it's not a financial transaction some would even say it's even more valuable mm -hmm. um, to get that name and email you want to say I'm willing to give you enough value for that name and email address more than what you would expect and so I love creating free reports and ebooks and, and delivering and so people know wow this guy knows what he's talking about he's really giving now I want to know more about what he has to say so that when I have a product or service to offer whether it's my own or whether I'm offering it as an affiliate they're more likely to listen but I don't think the rules of engagement have changed in terms of that in uh, in 6,000 years okay and Kelly, well, would you like to finish out with the funnel? I <clears throat> I love the offer funnel, which is a combination of a marketing funnel and a product funnel. I I think that um, blogging and podcasting and social media, guest blogging, being a guest on a podcast, anything you can do to spread your expertise far and wide, you know, makes your funnel wider at the top. Mm -hmm. So. You know, that's where you start. And then I'm very focused on a deep funnel because once I've won a, a fan, a client, once someone has accepted an offer for free content, they move quickly down into opting in to paying, to paying more, to, you know, a lifelong relationship with me. Um, and and if, if you create a great offer funnel, it works and it pays well. Good. Okay, Lynn. I think you had something to say about that. 
Uh, yeah, I was jumping in because it was funny because we talked about that on the podcast, Kelly's podcast last week, and she put me on the spot. She didn't give me any, like, you know, talking points ahead of time. I love when she does that. She's just like, hey, here we go. Record live. Right. Anyway, so she's like, so I noticed you don't have a funnel. You know, like I'm not doing like a free opt-in or a lead-in. Right. Um, there's no OTO. There's no back-end thing, you yeah. know, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I know. I was like, because, you know, when you see what everyone else is doing and what's working for everyone else, I just like to do the opposite. <laughs> so people expect that. Yeah. They, they've come to expect that funnel. They've come to expect that whole process. So when they don't get this pop-up or this, but wait, there's more. Mm-hmm. Or act now. And, and when they don't get that, I think that it, it gives, I, I just like giving that impression. You know, yep. here we go, straight up, this is what it's about. So we actually had that conversation on her podcast, and she was like, uh, where's your funnel? <laughs> so All right. Fun. Well, John, um, I, I think we're uh, about out of time here. John, don't you agree? I, I think we certainly have come to a, uh, a good, good stopping point. <laughs> what I'd like to do before we leave, though, is make sure that each of you have, uh, you know, just, just let's just start from the um, right here, and Lynn, tell people how they can best connect with you. Lynn Terry, clicknews.com, at C-L-I-C-K-N-E-W-Z.com, and you can find me on Twitter, at Lynn Terry. Kelly? Uh, solosmarts.com. Okay. John? JohnPaducek.com. JohnPaducek.com. And Joel? JoelCom.com. <laughs> that's uh, That's got to be a lot of fun to say, JoelCom.com. Okay. And it, it is my real name. I mean, there's... People ask me if that's a stage name that I did for the internet, and it's not. It's just proof that God has an incredible sense of humor. <laughs> and I'm David Perdue. I'm sorry, Lynn? Well, I was just going to say Lynn Terry is my real name, too, now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, and I'm David Perdue, and I am at uh, mynams.com. And um, Sterling sent me a note here and said he wanted to apologize. None of his wor- cameras are working on his computer anymore. Something happened on a reboot and uh, with a new Skype update, and he... Um, just before the program, and he couldn't get anything to work. So you know what? I think we'll just take this away from him. What do you think? We'll just meet someplace next week and do it again. <laughs> there there you right. go. Sounds good to me. That's right. Well, tell Sterling we said uh, this worked without him, but we would love to have him back next week, and we really appreciate what he does here. Absolutely. And if you guys want to hang on just a minute when I end the broadcast, uh, we can hang out for the after party just for a few minutes. Okay. So, again, really appreciate you guys joining us today. Uh, obviously, Star- sorry Sterling couldn't make it with his uh, technical meltdown over there, but uh, it was great having you guys. Great to meet you or see you again, Kelly. Great to meet you, Lynn. And Joel, always a pleasure. And David, thanks for uh, pitch hitting for Sterling today. Sure. So, great having you all here. Thanks again. Thanks.